Very good. So here is the rehearsal application. Now, I've got a hard stop in about 25 minutes, so I'm going to move through a very basic overview of the platform. Um, and uh, as I do that, uh, you know, feel free to ask questions. We can come back to those. But in effect, rehearsal is, as we've talked about many times today, a video-based practice, a video-based coaching, and a best practice sharing application. Uh, that is ultimately what rehearsal is all about. So um, when an individual first comes into the rehearsal platform, they're going to be driven to assignments based on their role and responsibility within the organization. Now, there are two ways to run rehearsal activities and assignments. What I'm going to show you today is logging into the rehearsal platform and actually interacting with that direct environment. Um, so, so that's one way. The other way, and probably more importantly or more exciting for many of you, is the opportunity to have rehearsal activities as a part of and launched from third-party platforms like an LMS, like an LXP. The Rockstar Learning Platform, for example, has media type of rehearsal that you can have that activity be launched from the RLP or that environment and open up in a window to allow individuals to interact with that. But again, today I'll focus specifically on logging into the platform and interacting. So for the first walkthrough, I'll show you a basic activity in rehearsal. Uh, many people need to learn how to tell the company success story, for example. So let's start there. Uh, to tell the success story here, I'll move into that. And here's an activity in rehearsal. The activity in rehearsal is built across four key areas. The first one and the most important one is going to be the prompt video. This is going to set the stage for what the individual needs to work on. Now, again, this could be sales related topics. It could be leadership training. It could be product information or onboarding. In effect, anything that you can think of from a skill building perspective that you want someone to iterate on and practice around, that could ultimately be what this scenario is about. But let's hit play and listen to this particular one. Wow, sounds like you guys have some pretty cool stuff going on. But I always like to do my due diligence. So can you tell me about some success stories that some of your clients have had? So in effect, I'm being asked to tell a success story. I learned about this maybe through an e-learning program, or we might maybe had an online Zoom meeting to talk about the power of a good success story, for example. In addition to that video, the instructor or the trainer can add some additional backstory information via text, instructions on what to do. Rehearsal also supports grading criteria. So each scenario can be built with configure, configurable and customized grading criteria per response. So in this case, there are four key response criteria and we're sharing that with the learner so they can understand what they're ultimately being graded against before they ever begin their practice session. And then we can include some attachments, a PDF document, a Word document, maybe a video file on what does good look like so somebody can play that video, for example. Well, Karen, I can appreciate that. And they can sit back and see how somebody else might handle telling that success story. So once they get prepared and ready and they, they want to begin their practice session, they grab whatever device they're comfortable in using. Rehearsal is a device neutral application. We've got mobile apps for both the iOS and Android uh, options, but we also can work on PCs and Macs, whatever device they have. They simply grab that device and when they're ready, they click the record button. When they do that, it initializes their camera and their microphone. You see me here live and in person. And now I'm in the comfort of my own office. Going back to my conversation momentarily or before with Brian, we talked about the discomfort in doing live practice and role play. But today with modern technology, talk about a safe place. I'm in my office. Nobody else is around. I get to work on my skill. In fact, I'm going to tell a success story. And I click start the recording. I get a three, two, one countdown. And now I'm on the stage and I begin to work through telling that particular story. Take everything that I learned or that I think I learned from that earlier conversation or that earlier training. And now I get my chance to implement that. I get maybe for the first time ever the opportunity to actually work through the conversation or the skill that I just learned. And I talk for as long as I need to addressing all the key points. And when I'm done and I click stop recording, what you're going to notice is that rehearsal plays that video back to the individual instantaneously. There is no wait. It's going to start playing back instantly. And then I, as the learner, begin my self-assessment of how I performed. Let's take a look. And now I'm on the stage and I begin to work through telling. And you can see that video plays back and I sit back and I critique my performance. And again, probably for the first time ever in many, in many cases, I'm getting a chance to see what do I look like? What do I sound like? How am I handling that particular dialogue? And then I'm simply presented an opportunity to do one of two things. Either I nailed it. I did it exactly the way I wanted to. And I am ready to submit that recording for somebody to review and provide feedback on. 
If I want to do that, I click submit recording. But there's another option, discard recording. Individuals are pretty tough on themselves. And in fact, in rehearsal, on average, individuals click this discard recording button 5.6 times before they click the submit recording button, which means we're leveraging behavioral science that they want to do it right to get them iterations and repetition in their practice. So on average, the individual says, ah, I'm not so happy with that initial attempt. I click the discard recording button. That goes into the trash can. That recording never gets seen by anybody else. I, re I reiterate, a safe place to practice. practice. If I make a mistake, it's between me and the camera. Nobody else ever sees that. I discard that recording and I try it again. By clicking start recording, I get the same three, two, one countdown and I try it another time. I say, um, less. I make better eye contact with the camera. Whatever it is, I work on that skill and I improve that skill and I'll talk as long as I need to, for example. And I'll go over all those details. And again, when I feel like I've got it right, I'll stop the recording, it'll play back. I get those same decision points. So stop the recording. And I try it another time. I say, um, less plays back. Let's say for demo purposes, this time I nailed it. I did a great job. For example, I don't need to discard it and try it again. I'm ready to submit it off for someone to review and provide feedback on. I simply click the submit recording button. It says, are you sure you want to submit that for review? I click. Okay. The moment that I do that, my video uploads into the platform adding it into the workflow of that particular scenario. And at that same moment, notifications go out to anyone provided uh, set up to provide me coaching and feedback. That might be a mentor, a manager, a peer, an instructor, a subject matter expert, whoever, it could be one, it could be multiple people get notified of my submission. Those people can come in by clicking the link that they got uh, sent and they'll be able to review my video and provide me with coaching and feedback. In a moment, I'll also show you how you can lean on AI and artificial intelligence to automatically provide coaching and feedback and direction to that individual based on that assessment and not require an actual mentor to get involved. But let's go down the mentor path. So as a mentor, I get notified that Jeff has just submitted a response to that scenario. By clicking the link in that notification that I get, I am moved into the administrative side of the rehearsal platform and more specifically directly into that response from that individual. So as a mentor or subject matter expert, I can review the initial scenario. And as I scroll down, I'll see Jeff's submission on this particular talking point and I'll hit the play button. And I try it another time. I say, um, less. And I can play that back and I can assess how Jeff handled that particular talking point. And then for me, I've got one of two options. Let's say Jeff did a good job, but not a great job with that response. And I want to provide some coaching and feedback, but ask Jeff to work on us that skill some more. I'll click the prompt for a new response button. And when I do that, now I have the chance to provide coaching and feedback to that individual. So I can click edit text and I can type in anything here, for example, and I can add bullet points or add my text-based feedback to Jeff and I can send him just text-based information. Or I can upload, or more times than not, record a video back to Jeff based on my feedback. I click the record button. You've seen this recording process happen. Now I've got my managerial hat on now and I'm providing coaching and feedback back to that individual. So I click the start recording button and I'll break down Jeff's performance. Jeff, that was a good initial attempt on telling a success story, but you missed a key part of any success. And that is the financial benefit of that company, for that company. What was the ROI? You're talking to a buyer and they want to understand the financial impact on that decision. Go back and tell that same story. It's a good one, but make sure to interject the financial win, the ROI, so that we can see that again. Practice some more and resubmit. I want to take a look. Stop the recording. Jeff, that was a good initial. It plays back. I click submit recording. It's ready to go. The moment that I click publish, now the volley goes back over the net. So we've had an individual practice their message, get some coaching and feedback. All of this is happening in this asynchronous back and forth environment. So now later on in the day or the next day, that learner can review that feedback from their manager by going into the system and they can review the initial scenario again. They can watch back their attempt and they can even listen to their coach and read the instructions that that coach gave them on how to improve that skill. And now the platform is presenting them with that record button again to try it again. They click the record button and now they've gotten coaching and feedback. They know what they need to improve upon. So they click start recording and they'll do that this time.
They'll tell that same success story. They'll interject or add the ROI story to this. You get the idea. They'll improve that story. Maybe they'll do another 5.6 attempts before they submit it. But the process here is practice, get coaching, practice some more, and keep working on that skill. Stop the recording. They'll tell that same success. It plays story. back. I'll submit that because I'm happy with it. Am I sure? Yes, I click OK. And what you'll see is that new video falls right in line. So one of the great aspects of a platform like rehearsal is this idea of cataloging that conversation. This is the conversation between me and the mentor where I'm able to review my historical submissions and see the coaching and feedback coming through all in one place. Now, again, when I submit that new video, my mentor gets a notification. They click the link. They jump back into that conversation when they have time. So ignore time zone issues and ignore in live back and forth. This gives everyone a chance to work on this skill when they have time. I scroll down. I watch this new performance. And let's say this time Jeff nailed it. He did a great job. I don't need to prompt him to do it again. I can move into final review. Final review allows me to still provide coaching and feedback, but we are now introduced to the grading rubric. This is the rubric that we had set up for this particular scenario. Now, this rubric can be whatever you want it to be. The text can be whatever you want it to be. The grading scales can be whatever you want them to be. But in this case, we've got four grading scales based on four key attributes. Jeff did great with everything, but he struggled a little bit with financial information. So I'll give him a seven out of 10, but everything else was great. Jeff got an 85% on this. And now I can add one final note to Jeff. I'll click the record button. And this is my closing the loop with that individual. Jeff, that was fantastic. Much better than before. And I really liked how you brought that ROI information into the story. In fact, I want to share this with the rest of the team. This is a home run and something that they can all learn from. So I just want to say congratulations. I'm going to move this into the leaderboard so that the peers can take a look at that. And I just want to say congratulations. This is a fantastic response. Buyers are going to love it. Take care. Stop the recording. Jeff, that was fantastic. Submit that recording. It's ready to go. Now, when I click publish, a handful of things happen. One, we set the completion status to completed of this activity, so nobody else has to get involved with this anymore. Two, we set the score to 85%. Three, we send an e a notification to that individual, letting them know that everything's done with a link back to take a look at that feedback. And lastly, if you've got interaction here set up with an LMS, all of that data can move between rehearsal into that LMS for tracking purposes, for example. Lastly, this is a home run response. One of the great things about practice is giving it people a chance to fail, but also to succeed. And once they do succeed, utilizing that user-generated content, that video, as an educational asset moving forward. It's a huge win. And so this is a great video and we want to use this going forward. I simply click add this response to the leaderboard. When I do that, I can type in a note like this is great or call out something specific that Jeff did so well and I can hit send to the leaderboard. Now that video, anytime in the future that a learner comes into the platform and they either go into the leaderboard or more specifically, they can go into that scenario, that success story scenario, and they can click view peer responses. And when they do that, they're going to see the best of the best from their peers. All of these are great submissions that were submitted. They can click the play button. They'll tell that same success and story. they can sit back and listen to how that individual tells that success story. And they can take notes and start to learn from their peers. And they can come into that leaderboard and sort and search and filter on key terms or key things that they may be struggling with. And now we've got this reusable asset library, this dynamic library building of all of the best responses, for example. So I'll kind of pause very quickly as I do a transition, just to recap. So far, what I've showed you is the idea of video-based practice in rehearsal and what that looks like. The idea of coaching in the rehearsal world, which is this asynchronous video-based coaching environment. And lastly, the sharing of best practices. The idea that we can you know, have these reusable assets that people can access and learn from over time. Those are the three pillars of the rehearsal platform. But... There are some new and really cool features that Rehearsal leans on that I can show you some other really dynamic use cases. So what you just saw was more traditional rehearsal, practice and coaching. What if, and the answer is we can, what if we could introduce AI into the mix? What would that ultimately look like? Well, let's take a look at that. So I can build a scenario workflow here called the elevator pitch. Same general concept. It's a scenario where I'm asking an individual to give their elevator pitch, for example. So. In this case, I'll hit play and listen to the request. 
listen, I'm really interested in hearing about your company, but I've got a meeting in like two minutes. Can you give me just a quick 30 second overview of what you have to offer and then we can set up a time later down the road so that I can learn more? Great. My elevator pitch needs to come out. I've trained on it. I've, I've worked through with my manager, but now here's a chance for me to practice it before I get in front of a customer. And so I simply click the record button. When I do that, I'm back on camera and I'm going to tell my, my elevator pitch. I click start recording. And I say rehearsal is a video-based practice and coaching platform that allows individuals to improve their skills. That's a basic response. And I can talk for as long as I need to, to address that particular ele elevator pitch, but you get the idea. When I'm done, I'm going to click stop recording. And I say rehearsal I'll submit is that because I like it. I click OK. So very much like before, everything so far has been the same. Now the video is uploading into the rehearsal platform. But now we've got AI and text analysis turned on for this particular scenario. What does that mean? That means all of what I just said is being transcribed. The audio file is being transcribed into text. And that text is being compared to keywords that we want that individual to say. We want them to say five keywords. But I purposefully, in my response, only said four. I said skill coaching, practice, and rehearsal. I did not say the word technology on purpose. And this scenario requires that I say all five keywords before I can move forward. So I can view my transcript to see exactly what I said and how I said it and see where those keywords are. But I also know that I didn't say all the keywords. And so the system is not going to allow me to continue forward until I am able to say all five keywords. But because I didn't capture a successful response here, the system knows that and they're going to take me to some remedial content, some ways for me to learn more about this topic because I didn't say all five keywords. So I can go to a learning module. That learning module can be a video, a document. It can be an e-learning course in your See in your LMS, for example, whatever that is, the individual can go consume additional content. So right now, this is providing us with an adaptive learning journey based on the individual performance. Those that know what they're saying and say all the right keywords, they don't have to take this step. Those that don't get a chance automatically to review some additional content and get additional training. So they review that when they're ready, they return to the scenario and try again. They come back here without a mentor asking them to do it again. The system is now giving them a chance to practice another time. So now I'll click the record button and I'll go through that recording process again, based on that new content that I've consumed. Let's start the recording. And now I'll say rehearsal is a video-based practice and coaching platform that allows individuals to improve their skills using modern technology. I'll stop the recording. And now I'll say, I'll submit that recording. I'll click okay. We do another text analysis audio to text, text to comparison against those five keywords. This time I said all five keywords. So now the system is going to say, great, you've said all five keywords, you are good to go. You can move forward in this process. So what is moving forward in the process look like ultimately? Well, it's going to take me into the next phase of this self-guided direction. Good job. You mentioned at least five keywords. I can move on. And that next phase is to grade my response. So now I can go in and actually grade my response. How comfortable did I feel? Huh? I did nine out of 10, for example. Did I keep it under 60 seconds? Yes, I did. Did I use the word technology? I did. Did I show confidence? Maybe I, I don't think I showed confidence. So I uncheck that. I submit that. And now my grade is locked in on a self-grade as 84.62%. And now that activity is considered completed in rehearsal. So you saw two very different aspects of rehearsal. One, a very manual back and forth live ex or asynchronous exchange between two people. And that resulted in a completed activity. The other one is fully self-guided and AI directed where that individual went through multiple attempts on working on a skill, getting to a point where they can self-grade on their own, submit that response, and nobody else ever had to be involved in that particular experience or exchange. So that's where we start to interject some of the really neat things around AI and text analysis that, that provide assistance to an individual. Additionally, our latest release was an AI report that individuals are able to run on any submission they make in the platform. And when they make that submission, they'll be able to click this little button on their submission up in the top right-hand corner that says, view your AI report. Now, this AI report is not only available to the learner to view at, when they want to view it, but the mentor, before adding any mentoring feedback or coaching, can view that as well. And when they click on that, that report is going to provide them a real-time feedback via AI and sentiment analysis on their communication. 
it's going to say from a high level performance summary, whether they did good, whether they need to work on some things, it's going to break down nine key conversational and sentiment analysis points and give them a map of where they're strong and weak. For example, here I can see my eye contact, tone, and logic are all really great, but I may need to improve on my pace or articulation, for example. As I scroll down, I can see my articulation and my facial expressions moving from positive to negative and my pacing moving from fast to slow across this entire video that I submitted. So as I move here, I can see what was I saying at this moment when my speech went so fast, for example, or when my facial expression turned negative here, what was I talking about at that moment? And I can learn from that, for example. Additionally, the AI is going to capture keywords, as we mentioned, but also filler words. How many times did you say um or like or well or just? And I can view my transcript here to see where those are called out in my response, for example. And lastly, and probably most importantly, I, get, I begin to get a comparison, a relative comparison between my performance on that and everybody else that submitted a video on that particular topic. So I can see here relative to everybody else, my greens are eye contact tone, filler words, and logical structure, really strong. But my pacing falls down, for example, and we all know because you're listening to me right now, I talk really fast. So my pacing always needs a little bit of work, for example. But I can gather that through this relative comparison. And again, really without anybody else interjecting into feedback processes, the system can direct them into how they are as a communicator and how they handle that particular talking point. Now, I feel like I have to end this with just some fun things or something different. Uh, I'm going to go back to anybody that was here for the opening uh, session with Derek, who showed the picture of silly me sitting in a wood chair on top of a fire pit, calling that the hot seat. I'll end this particular presentation with really cool feature in rehearsal. Up to this point in time, what you have seen is this value of practice and iteration in the rehearsal world. But maybe you need to have more of a certifiable or validation that somebody could do this in the real world. That means you don't get a chance to do it again if you make a mistake in the real world. You have to do it one time. Our hot seat is a one and done opportunity. If I move into a hot seat, I get one chance to watch the video and one chance to respond. So first, I have to acknowledge that I'm going to move into a hot seat. When I click show me the scenario, that scenario then is going to play. When I click play here, as a new sales rep, this individual is going to say, hey, you're a new sales rep. Uh, somebody wants to know about the product. Talk about the product as if they don't know anything at all. Describe to me the benefits and functionalities of it as if I didn't know anything about what we did. At the end of that 15 second video, watch what happens. My camera automatically turns on, the countdown automatically begins, and I'm on the stage. Like in the real world, when somebody asks me a question or poses something to me, I have to be prepared to answer. So I give my best answer in real time, just like I would in front of a buyer or a situation. And when I'm done and I click stop recording, that video is automatically submitted and automatically uploaded on my behalf. I don't get a chance to go back and try it again or discard a bad recording. So if you really want to put people's feet to the fire or put them in the hot seat, you can do that through a scenario here in rehearsal. Okay, so that's it. That's the end of my session today. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. And I know we've got a lot of chat and some questions going on. So uh, I'll try to take on a couple minutes to deal with those um, before we roll over into the next presenter. So uh, as I kind of take a look at that, if somebody wants to chime in with audio uh, questions for me, that's great. Or I'll just kind of read the ones that are here. Yeah, Jeff, let's go ahead and go through some of these questions in the questions panel. So Robert says, this is a great way to practice and get coaching and feedback. Do you think a follow-up practice in the work environment to mimic real world application without the technology and sitting at the computer would further support practice and learning obtained on the platform? Great question. And yeah, certainly. So think I like to compare it to a basketball uh, game, right? So, or, or basketball team, there are different ways to practice rehearsal in the world of basketball is going to be your repetitions. It's going to be sitting at the free throw line, making free throws, sitting at the three point line, shooting three pointers, working on those skills to get better at them. And then you've got scrimmages, which is kind of what you're saying, Robert, go out and experience it more in a scrimmage world, like this faux environment. And then it's game day, go out in front of a customer. So certainly rehearsal is a piece of a broader puzzle, but that's an example of how that might play out. Awesome. And then we had a question 
oh, I think Andrew might be answering it, but we can see who answers it faster. Are the videos of the gentleman in the red plaid shirt, are those built in or do we create those ourselves? Those are created by the customer. So you're creating the content that's most applicable to your business and what you're trying to accomplish. So certainly uh, certainly something that's, a, that's a, about the customer creating that content. But once you build it one time, people can reuse that time and time again. Um, and, and I'll just couple, kind of uh, answer a couple more and then I'll transfer it over. Um, we are, you know, we do not have the, uh, the ability right now for AI to grade against words not to say that's not a part of the platform, but there is the opportunity to log in a time code for, for feedback and responses. Yeah. So happy to, to spend more time talking about rehearsal. If you have interest, feel free to reach out to us. But for now, um, I just want to say thank you so much for your time today, for not only listening to the Brian Neal conversation, but for taking a look at rehearsal. I hope you enjoyed it and have a great rest of the day.